Winning Bets. Online betting for every eSports fan. Dota 2 and Hearthstone, CSGO and Overwatch, StarCraft 2, the choice is yours. Express bets for multiple matches or live bets on the game you are watching right now. Know your way around Dota 2? Make a prediction for picks and bets. Playing CSGO? Guess the number of rounds in a certain match. Daily quests for all participants and all the best choice of payment systems. More than 600,000 users have already made their bets on the spectacular matches since 2011. EGB.com. You know for sure who's going to win. Welcome back to the PGL CSGO Minor Championship Asia. We are live from the Pinewood Iskandar Studios here in Malaysia, a fabulous movie and TV production studio. Um, Sir Scutes, as always, of course, I've been this uh, about 50 or so years. <laughs> Next to me, I've got <laughs> my man Vendetta and Natu join us for the last match of the day. Again, we're doing the upper bracket final. So keep in mind, uh, Renegades and VG Gaming are still very much alive in the, in, in the tournament. Neither will go home today, so to speak. But whoever loses will drop down and have to face Tai Lu. Yeah. Um, which, again, we didn't expect to happen. We all or kind of thought, MVP. well, I, I'm sorry, MVP no, project. You totally expected it. Yeah. Oh, I called VG. Yeah. You know, yeah, I win because I'm an analyst like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they'll drop down and play. Uh, tai Lu will play. MVP. Let, let me backtrack that. <laughs> Let's look at the graphic because they have it right. <laughs> And I'm, I'm a little frustrated. You don't have to do math on it. I don't have to do the math. I, yeah. So there you have it. We're going to do Renegades, VG, Cyber Zen. And then tomorrow we've also got three uh, best of threes. So we'll do Project Tai Lu. Then we'll do that constellation match of the loser of Renegades, VG, and the winner of Project Tai Lu. And then we'll have our grand final. Again, uh, kind of the teams we all expected to be here. But maybe a slightly different order. Yeah, uh, I think that's the the right point. Obviously, the big big surprise being VG actually managing to topple uh, topple Tai Lu. I think this is the first best of three win they've actually ever had versus Tai Lu. Oh my! So so they've had you know a couple of. I think they had here. that one in the the. the but was that a best of three? It was a best of three according to the stats I was looking at through. You sure about that? I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah, because the the closest thing they've been otherwise has been two maps and a best of three, no best of five. Uh, and other than that, it's been I like one double map check here, that for one, you one, yeah, in a bit, yeah. yeah it's been, but it's been pr pr uh, predominantly just one map here, one map there, and uh, it would always be Tai Lu, you know. And then and at that point, it would also be like an overtime win for Vici. It wouldn't be like a convincing yep. kind of deal, and then Tai Lu would win their map picks by you know sixteen five, sixteen seven, those kind of numbers. So, but still, it's going to be you know a big barrier taken away from them. Like th that's been an issue for them. It's it's needless yeah, to say yeah. forty to what was it twelve or twenty? Uh, forty to fourteen. Yeah, forty yeah. to fourteen. That's, head -to -head. Yeah. that's how the head to head goes. So that's obviously become a monster for for VG, so yeah. that them being able to win in this kind of a situation, big tournament, um, it, it's definitely definitely going to be a big thing. That can lift your game, even in, uh, against other teams, too. Yeah, definitely. Come, uh, they should come into this feeling very confident, yeah, very high-spirited. Sure. Again, we haven't seen the maps or anything yet, but we certainly will. But let's talk about Renegades. Again, they, they came through on the top of their group. Uh, no, no stress, no worries, really. I mean, kind of kind of okay. Um, I guess a nuke overtime earlier today. Stress there. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but then they closed it out on that second map. Yeah. Uh, no, it was pretty good. There's their roster. Why don't you guys walk us through this? 
Yeah. Well, yeah, obviously starting from uh, from the left side, you have Azza, Yam, JKS, Ustilo, and Ricky. Uh, Azza, in my eyes, the best player on that ty- on that team, kind of in the, the one consistent factor, really, who's always been uh, been there to perform uh, for the Australian side. You have one of the, I guess, the newest newcomer in that sense in Ustilo and, and Ricky, who, uh, who both, uh, well, kind of marked the shift of uh, Renegades being that buddy group, as we talked about, you know, the, the Australians, uh, the guys from down under, uh, showing up at tournaments, they being one of those teams that kind of, you know, they're, they're telling the world that they want to commit, they want to really go for it and become a, a better team in that sense. So, you know, they drop the, the friendship with magic approach and, and you know, go get down to the nitty gritty and just go for skill. And uh, it, it, for now, it seems to be working out pretty well. Uh, Ricky's definitely brought a completely new dimension to that team with his versatile opping, which is uh, pretty cool to see. It allows allows Renegades to play in, uh, in a completely different way and allows to change up their play style. Yeah, have double ops, for example, yeah. proper double ops. And With Yam, yeah. I think the, the big issue we saw so far and today, especially that the matchup we've been seeing from them is that a bit of sloppiness here and there in the small situations in after plans and two on twos and that kind of stuff where they kind of forget to play off each other, become too individualistic so, so that you can tell they're not communicating efficiently enough to tell each other what angles they're taking, you know, what's going on in their screen, or even if they are, then the other person is not really registering what the other guy is saying. Yeah. And therefore, it looks very, very weird, right? So they, they lost the opportunity. They lost a lot of rounds that were, weren't supposed to happen, really. But uh, the second map, I think, I guess they warmed up a little bit. You know, they got, got away from those, and uh, it was pretty straightforward. So if they continue on that path, and if we have Azar, uh, JKS, um, and Bricky, I guess, that would be the, the three main forces for me to really uh, uh, pull in their weight. I I feel like they should be in a in a prime position, though it's been a month ago. They These guys met at the uh, Extremes Land tournament, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's where VG actually beat Renegade. So, yeah, that's uh, yeah, so, yeah. Kerbal always. Yeah, and let's go ahead and look at their roster for VG. And one thing to keep in mind, these guys did play already here at the tournament. Yeah, yeah um, for sure. And that was an overtime win by Renegades, 21-19 to on Cobblestone. After being up 13-3, well, 12-3, yeah. and then yeah. we passed around for 13-3. Yeah. And VG came back to equalize. Yeah. There we are. Obviously, they have the, the VG lineup joking or choking. Uh, Advent uh, Lovey or Love YY, as the Chinese casters told us to, to call him by. Which yeah, that's I, not going to happen. It's never going to stick. Sorry, not going to happen. Yeah, uh, TB and Savage. TB and Savage being the two veterans in terms of just having a long uh, long time in, in earlier pro teams, whether it was, uh, you know, Tai Lu or, uh, or other iterations of uh, those lineups. So playing 1.6, obviously, for years and years and years. Savage being one of the more, uh, more accomplished players just from Asia. Period. Yeah. Well, uh, so he's like he's one of the big monsters. You would put him, Jungle, uh, Alex, and then obviously like Glow, Solo, yeah. Termi. Doesn't seem like age is being an issue for him either. Oh uh, no, he's, definitely he's not. Going down the route of Neo and Taz, just you know being able to do things, you know, even if he's been around for the longest time, and uh, he's not far too far off from hitting thirty, right? So that's uh, even though he looks way younger, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> the numbers don't lie, do they? Yeah. Um, still playing very well. Showcase, he can he can play with UMP, he can play with an op, he can pretty much play with any weapon out there yeah, and well, ma- make a massive impact. The thing that's coolest to me for uh, coolest for me to see with him is obviously like people talk about how reaction times you know slows down as as you get older, which is true to a certain extent, but it's not as massive as people like to like to portray it. Uh, you know, it's like oh, when you hit 25, all of a sudden you can't react anymore. Like that's yeah, kind of the, the impression tell, you get. Tell that to the best hockey gold is in NHL. Exactly, like they peak around <laughs> yeah. 34, right? And it feels like the same kind of thing is happening for Savage because. I've seen some absolutely insane stuff and some ridiculous shots coming out from him that's just like pure instinct mixed with reaction time. It's just like, it does not make sense. It doesn't look human at all, but but he's still got it in him. And uh, we definitely got to see that in, uh, in in their previous matchup as well, that he was an absolute beast on both maps. That's going to be a win condition for, for VG on this one as well, right? Exactly. So th- this is, a lot of this is going to fall on, um, on a fall on Savage. And I think he's going to be the, the most... Uh, likely person to actually come through with it in terms of like being able to put, put up a big performance uh, when it matters the most. Obviously, Lovey had a great, uh, great series uh, last time around, but you know he's he's not doesn't have the experience really to fall back on to the point where you can kind of count on him to be the guy that's going to show you the way to victory. So uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, definitely definitely looking for Savage to to be uh, be the one leading the charge. 
And uh, just looking at some uh, basic map stats over the last three months, again, shout out to halflifetv.org for, for letting me gather all this information on that great website. But just looking at like their land play, like how many matches they've played. Renegades in the last three months has nine maps played other than this weekend uh, at land. Yeah. 68 maps played <laughs> on land in the last three months for, for CyberZen. And then 40 more online to 48 online for Renegades. Obviously, Renegades has relocated to North America. They're playing on all the North American leagues, so they're playing, playing a lot of that. So depending on how they do today, they might end up being a North American team. You know, they might be Australian, but you know they're in North America, so yeah. maybe they're a North American team now. I don't know. Isn't that how that works? I, I think that will depend. Yeah, if they do well, then if they, they do get well. adopted. Yeah. Oh, if, if not, they're oh, the okay, shunned, okay, okay, yeah. shunned Australians. Then they're Australians. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. All right, well, let's get into the, the meat of it. Let's take a look at the, the picks and the bands and uh, see what we're going to play today. Bada boom, bada bim. Ba All right, here we go. Take it away, Vendetta. Oh, okay. So Leechy starting things off with the Mirage ban. Now, honestly, okay. I, I just want to focus on one thing, and that's the nuke is picked up by Renegades. That's uh, probably one of the bigger, bigger things. We did see Renegades do the same thing in their previous matchup. I, I'm not too convinced about this pick. Vici, they, they play the map, mm -hmm. uh, and they show that they weren't completely uh, clueless. You know, barring figuring out rotations time uh, or rotations for the lower bomb site. But Renegades didn't look too impressive on, on their nuke pick well, either I, versus I, MVP. I, I guess they had the benefit of watching the, the map of, that VG just played against uh, Tai Lu on nuke. And, yeah. That's true, but I, like for, I didn't see anything special about Vici's T side to the point where I'm thinking like, okay, they have like no, but the biggest tell. Yeah, especially the CT side, I mean, like having issues rotating and all that stuff. But then again, VG should be smart enough to be able to adjust from the issues they had but yeah. and they, they were able to win the game even with the issues that's uh, that's also to take into consideration that even with all of the bumps in the road they had they managed to come through in the end yeah so but then again i mean there's always two sides of the coin right i mean renegades if you go back and think of that mvp project game from them there were so many mistakes so many small little th details they just screwed up big time right yeah I mean, you can't really take that into consideration if they've felt comfortable on the map and like they practice a lot and they 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 found their shrine on it then you can't really go back and think okay we're just not gonna pick the map right of course you're, you're not gonna abandon your entire belief system pretty much because of <laughs> one game but one thing they have to be really worried about is the fact like how much they got shut down by the fact that sign for instance from the clay versus mvp had a great uh, great game in yard that really limited the opportunities that re the Renegades gave themselves really to be successful on their T side. And we saw Savage do the exact same thing to Tai Lu. So if we're going to see another performance from Savage where he comes out hot and starts off things and really creates uh, a lot of trouble for, for Renegades out in yard, I'm going to be curious to see what the Australians do to actually remedy that fact. Yep. Because you don't want to end up in a situation where you let VT get 11 plus rounds on their CT side. Then you're going to be in trouble no matter how good of a CT side you, you have yourself. It kind of, I don't know, this, the feel that I get is that they're just not feeling comfortable on a map like Terrain right now. Even though mm. it used to be yeah. a good Renegades map, right? That, that's the, the one they, in 2015 summer, um, they beat NIP and yeah. I think Fnatic on terrain as well, um, if I'm not mistaken. So that kind of tells me that they're probably not just not feeling hot on terrain right now, yeah. which is why they steer towards taking Nuke instead, because they had the choice of taking terrain, right? Mirage was the first man, so they could have easily taken terrain. Um, so, I mean, that's, I guess, the way you got to look at it, too. Yeah. Yep. And again, if we go to map three, we're going to have a rematch of yesterday. Uh, Cobblestone. Where they played each other in Cobblestone. Let's bring our casting duo in, Dan and James. James, I know you're super excited about that nuke pick, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, another nuke. Another nuke. Another yeah, day, another we'll, nuke. See, we'll see how it goes. Dust 2 is interesting. Um, I think it's a good match for Renegades. Yeah, it should Especially be. Especially with uh, Rick 8 in tow. And they've got a double up potential with Yam as well. So they will be uh, no slouches on that particular map. So I'll, I'll take it one map at a time. I think that's the, the map immunity at, the, at their peak, like when they were really contest, like contesting some top better teams. It was because Ricky was just going ham on us too, CT side, right? He was w all over the map. When you say contesting top teams, are we talking like... Yeah, well, you know what I mean. Like, uh, yeah, like, <laughs> I'm yeah. not meaning they were world beating at no, any no, no, point in time. Like, yeah, so when you say top were, teams, you mean not top teams, they were, they were playing <laughs> major qualifiers at that point, right? Yeah, so no, that's, yeah. that's fair enough. I'm thinking like if they were like <laughs> dominating <laughs> NA Pro League teams, it's like... Hey, oh. whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> yep. um, no, You're no, absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some predictions going. Start at this end. Yeah. Uh, I, I think still does too. Yeah, I think the attributes that Renegades has a team, like uh, James was saying, as we were here saying, they they have the double op potential going on here, for example. So I feel like this should be this should be one for Renegades. Okay. Mm. 
Yeah, I normally, know. normally I'd go with Renegades as well for this, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of feeling that Vichy are going to be super excited about the fact that they beat Talu in, in a good kind of way. Not that they're going to overplay their hand, but they're going to feel extremely confident going into it, and I think that's going to be that's going to play dividends on, on a map like Dust too. They're going to actually like allow Savage to to uh, go brutal. Yeah, exactly. Like Savage, let him be Savage with that op on Dust too, which is going to create a ton of opportunities for them. And I think if you go head to head, Ricky with Savage, I think you you can actually ha see Savage coming in ahead of that. Gentlemen? Although I see some problems on Nuke for Renegades, and I fear that maybe they picked it just because they spotted some stuff in the match that they just saw Vichy. My, my, my heart says Vichy, but my brain says Renegades. I think Renegades will, uh, should win this one, and if they don't, I think it's going to be a bit, well, ups definitely a bit upset. My prediction is Dust 2 is the first map. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Nice, nicely done. <laughs> and now that I'm an analyst, I'm going to go with they live in Detroit. I was born in Detroit, so I'm going to Renegades. <laughs> <laughs> High-level stuff right there. That's going to do it for us. Thank you very much, guys. It's all yours. Take it away. Okay, then. So, as you said, Dusty is, well, you predict. I don't know how that works. In because the back. You, because you, Let's go. Because you know that the first map is Dusty. How is that prediction, James? That's not even a prediction. Because I said it is. That's, that's why well, it's okay. a prediction. Okay, well, that is going to be the first map. And uh, classically, this was always a great map here for uh, the, the Aussie teams whenever they would come over to, to Europe or North America, you know, way back when before we had the, you know, them be actually a, a mainstay feature in North America with a team house and, a, and a, you know, an org over there. And it was always a great map for, for them because it's Dust2, Dust2, the metagame um, differences from region to region do isn't that huge. You know, everybody knows how to play Dust2. Wherever you are in the world, it's usually pretty similar. So... It, it's often going to come down to a lot of the individual performances, and I, I do feel like Renegades have that in spades if they're actually having getting the you know the, the money out of their players, if they're getting the value out of their players who should be performing. On paper, it looks great for them. We got Ricker if he's on the on the orb, it's uh, going to be fantastic. Yamos he can pick up the orb for double orb setups. As a JKS, great rifler duo can be very aggressive, very dynamic, and you still always seen how much of a clutch player he can be. We know what they can do, James. It's just yet we're yet to really see. I think in this mi in this minor qualifier um, for the major, them really get those performances in as we know that they they can. Renegades will be starting on the T side. Again, the knife round is only for the third map of a best of three, and whoever picks the map will uh, lose choice of sides. The other their opponent will pick what side they want to start on for the first two maps. So here we are. Renegades getting off to a good start. We can actually use the uh, the map on this on this. Uh, Brilliant. We can use the map on a map because we love maps. We can see what's going on. Okay, we've got uh, Shoking going lower tunnel and three people looking to push through from B. Lovely stuff, but it's not going to work out for them. Renegades with two frags trying to find the third. There's a late peak from the uh, from Shoking, but. Uh, you can see Yam has moved back now to make life a bit more difficult for him. He's got teammates in tow, but two headshots for the CTs, bringing it to a 2 versus 2 The bomb goes down. We'll see if they can bring things back here. We've got a crossfire coming in, but Ricker's teammates gone down. It's Ricker alone now versus two. Trying to 1v1 Savage. There we go. Great start and a nice patient tap onto Show King, the second frag, frag for him at the end there. Lovely stuff from Renegades. Yeah, pure battle of individual skill going on with the pistols, the precision required, and... Yeah, I, I, this is going to be amazing for Renegades to get a good start with the pistol round one on the T side. That allows them to have a lot of momentum. And some teams are really, really good at picking their strategies when they're in this position. And this is the kind of position where you always have a good understanding for the next like three to six rounds what the economy looks like for the CTs. And so it allows you to make really nice choices. And speaking of which, we get... We get a, what was it, an attempt at just rushing down into the B-bomb site, but a quick smoke there from Vici Gaming. Sort of stopped that, but still a frag does go the way of Renegades. But their initial plan is somewhat broken. So what is the what is plan B for them? And they must be careful as well because Love YY. Are we, are we gonna are we gonna settle on one, James? Is it Love or Love YY? That's just not handy to say Love YY. It's not is in it? the middle of a fast round, but no. we'll do our best. Savage has been boosted for a B split. And uh, he has TB with him in CT spawn. Now Love YY needs to put in a great damage here. And Renegades, they can't stay in this tunnel because they will be very vulnerable indeed. We'll see if Love YY has bought enough time for his team to rotate. You still will get a frag, but now we can find Savage on default. He'll get taken down as well, leaving Advent alone with his P250s. Bam coming in both directions, but his inbox will be very full. You still are delivering a hail of bullets. Yeah, and also four kills with the MAC-10, so that's going to be nice money for him. And 
Renegades only losing one player that's actually awesome and it's quite cool they're going to buy up another a uh, Yam who did die, uh, buys up a, a MAC-10 here as well as they know that the CTs will be on the full full eco there no Kevlar and no helmets to be seen so that MAC-10 will be do, doing great work and it will allow them to play a fast a very fast round as well which is great and they could be rushing down suicide the bombs actually drop at the moment left for Ricker, which is a little bit uh, annoying I suppose as the sniper you never really want to have that in your hands but never mind yeah we'll be taking some forward frags there onto these Kevlar list opponents and it should be a formality now although as is dead I don't think anyone else will be lost and indeed that is the case so far effort lost man if you just the last man no more we move on to the uh, initial buy round Big buy of both sides. Savage on the AWP, rather than the UMP. Bit 50 50 with him. He's got a good spawn to go towards long, or maybe towards short as well. We'll see what he chooses to do. Will he be the kind of dynamic AWP that you need on Dust 2, the kind of Rickade style AWP that Renegades will favour, have the benefits of? Heading for a long pick, and there we go. Lovely stuff. Fast shot from Rikke towards long. Early advantages for Renegades. It's kind of a problem, isn't it, to have that uh, fast player lost. And there's no nades here, really, for, for uh, Vici Gaming. And interestingly, uh, you still have actually held on to a MAC-10. And there's not too much you can do with a MAC-10 against rifles on Dust 2. It kind of sucks. You can just... All you're really good for is just drawing fire away from your opponent's Although that said, there are you know a lack of helmets, but again, you have to get close ranges still with the Mac 10 for that to really have any effect. Yeah, I mean, he he really he needs his team to push, and he can hold off a rotation, but that might not come. Azaren Rike clearing out the short area. The last two players in CT spawn, so indeed, Yusilo could be useful there. But he's picked up a rifle, choking, making his way up to short. But JKS is waiting for the flank. Two man spray down for him, and. That is, oh, they got the bomb down as well after time though, so I think only the planter gets the uh, bonus in that situation. Whereas if it was during the round, then everybody alive would get a small bonus. And VT Gaming, one thing that uh, that they can't really have much success with, I don't think, is is any kind of uh, force buys generally on the CT side here. So they're just going to probably just get a few pistols, and I think it'd be great to see them saving as much as possible. Otherwise. Renegade's off to a great start. There's not too much they can do about that right now. And the, the thing that's worrying as well is that it allows Renegades to dictate the pace so heavily. And uh, speaking of which, you know, there's so many ways that, they, that Renegades could have gone with, so many approaches they could have gone with. They've chosen double AWP, which is going to mean that they will be playing fairly slowly in some of these rounds. And uh, that's, that's interesting because there are some teams who stick to five AKs, even if they have the opportunity, they have to, let's, you know, two you know, very good candidates for an AWP double op setup, for example. They'll still stick to AKs just so they can keep these really fast uh, contact rounds coming in to just keep breaking the economy of the CTs. And uh, they, they use the double ops as a, as a resort later on. But Renegades go straight to the double ops. And they stole Savages from the previous round. That's a good value play. Opportunist pickup. Yep. Always good to be an opportunist. Are you an opportunist, Dan? No. You should be an opportunist. I'll, I'll work on it. Fiji, not going for any aggressive plays with these pistols, waiting for Renegades to bring the game to them. So we'll see if Renegades' time management has improved in this particular map. We've got a creep towards B, actually. Very nice choking, taking down on the high ground. He's still not going to overextend and push into the site on his own. You never know what's behind that smoke. Smart stuff by him. So far, so good. Lovely spray as well, Dan. I know that makes you as happy as it makes me. Yeah. I was wondering if he's going to do it. And he did. It's a, and, and again, to those watching and wondering why we are highlighting the, the wall bang there from as a penetration kill, it's too rarely seen. And that position is it's, it's obviously more impactful if this was like a buy versus a buy round. But that is a position where it's a very, very good place to stand as a CT to blow up any B splits. And too few teams that do that or even know that that's possible, seemingly, yeah. to take down a player for free who's standing there. And so, oh, so often that player just wins the round for the CTs. Interestingly, it didn't even show as a penetration kill. Oh, it really? just showed as a clean kill, yeah. Not sure why. Maybe it needs more investigation. Really? I didn't notice that. Yeah. Wow. So we have uh, two players in the B bomb site shocking more towards the car. Just maybe just in case of any fast aggression. But there is no such aggression. 
I think Jan may have just popped through double doors already very early on into this round. Three orps on the server. This time two of them are going to be with VG. Rick is back to being the solo op of Renegades in this round. Three players towards A at present. We have Advent moving back and forth between CT and Ramp. So he might be boosted up. It's not terribly hard to get up there on your own, however. You, but you do need a running jump off the opposite boxes. You've got to manage your crouch well because you'll hit the ceiling otherwise. But it's all doable with practice. 50 seconds. Renegades playing the clock, which can be good to exhaust the utility of VG, but they're currently just biding their time. They've got three Molotovs in the hole and a lot of flashbangs as well. Renegades poking out long now. They will soon see a player in the ramp, I think. That smoke is... Oh, they've used the wall of smoke to isolate the player, but it's a one versus one duel. Meanwhile, the push is coming in on short. Yeah, yeah, I'm just looking to uh, use the smoke here to get a good angle, and he's going to spot some traces or some, some kind of flare from the gun, and that's going to be the frag for Az at the very least. And he's going to be able to tap down Mr. TB, and that is painful. All the presence for Vici Gaming on the A bomb site is completely wiped out, and this is looking great for Renegades. They had a slow approach to this round, and even if Lovey gets himself some kills here, he's not going to be able to get win the rounds, and potentially he is going to get hunted down as well. I mean, it's a great position, though, to keep himself alive, and he. It's unlikely that he's going to be against multiple players because already two are dead. So there's a pretty good chance, I'd say, for Lovey to survive. Was that just a straight shot through the door? I don't know. That's insane. No, he was, he was showing slightly to, to in the gap. Right, okay. There was a gap in the door which he was using to peek. And then he chose to look in the, uh, the direction from the same position. Timing being what it is in Counter-Strike. Oh, yeah. Looks away in another direction and the enemy appears. Renegades have a ton of money... They're rolling in the cash like Huel in Breaking Bad. Six to zero. Clean sheet so far. Fiji unable to offer much in this particular round. The odd grenade here and there. The CZs, the 5.7, P250s. Have another timing pick from Ricky. Not fast enough on this occasion. Got to be careful as well with those uh, long doors if you're not fast enough because those HEs can do colossal damage on this occasion though. They won't. Savage moving towards CT. Renegades, what is your anti-eco plan here? Well, that's kind of what I was wondering too. Is because okay, early in the round you see Ricky going for the the timing pick attempt, which can actually go very wrong sometimes in rounds like this. And then I'm, and I'm looking at this and I'm like, this looks like a default round. It doesn't does not look like an anti-eco round. It looks like they're playing a default. They're all spread out looking for picks and so on. And that that is when stuff like this happens. You got the CTs playing to isolate a T player, and they w and basically Renegades are making that job very easy for VG Gaming, and they get a pick off. Five versus four, and now things get a little, little bit more complicated. Renegades have to come together, and they have to barrel down a, a bomb site. And there's a flank now as well, coming in from top mid, pushing all the way from long advent. He's going to get spotted though; he doesn't die, but he ha does have to fall back on three HP. This forces, this gives a lot of information. It forces Renegades into the B bomb site. They should be fine still because they are going together, and they have so many advantages. But definitely playing a uh, playing a dangerous game in some portions of the round. Yep, they've, still left, they've left themselves with time, though, to correct for errors as well, which is always good. 40 seconds on the clock as they move into the site. And there we go. Only one play lost for Renegade, 7-0. to zero. They are enjoying their time in the sun. They've got the sandals out, the barbecues on. Lots of money on the Renegade side. VG on the buy once more. Will they go double ops on this occasion? Nope, just the one on to Savage. They'll be... Buying more grenades as well, so they'll have uh, full buy on this particular round, for the most part. Diffuse kits here and there. Of course, they're at maximum loss bonus. So on the plus side, that'll give them more buys and more utility. And more of the time. Nice pick off there by Savage. Moving away from long now. You still are trying to get work done elsewhere. He'll get traded immediately, however. But Shoking's down to 9 HP. If they ever read that he's heavily damaged, maybe they'll follow up on it. Azar indeed is doing just that. And the bomb needs to rotate now. Instantly, Renegades moving away from the A site where the final two CTs remain. So I think it's getting a little bit uh, tense here now, I think, for VG Gaming. They keep being put in these positions where they've got these big disadvantages to try to play from. And after, just go for all the Ecos. And Renegades are looking so good at getting the 8-0 right now. Unless something dramatic happens Oops. and Vici Gaming need to go for this for sure and they are making their way forwards now 
bomb down. Ricky surely will go for a peek from the window. Surely he's going to pop up there for a, a moment. Could even just jump over the over the side just for a quick peek over the top of the wall. They're saving. And now they're running back. Interesting. And there is a max loss bonus here for, for uh, Vici Gaming. So by saving two weapons, actually, including the, the AWP, they actually can have somewhat of an okay buy in the next round. But this next round should really feature some form of aggression. I think something around Catwalk could be really good with the AWP. Um, of course, uh, you know, previously we've seen such great work from Savage. If you can get him into an aggressive position, maybe they could just go for a, a boost by the stairs to look into uh, Dark. And if there's no flash timing, from Renegades, that could be a way to get an early run advantage, and they really do need one. They've they've gone for the uh, they went for the short play with, uh, with Savage on the round where unfortunately um, Rike got the long pick at the very beginning of the round. So indeed, let's see if they will do it again. We'll soon find out. Savage pointing towards long. Just the one up onto Renegades as well. Yeah, maybe we'll see him orping later on. But for right now, it's not required. Savage actually is uh, facing the middle area. Love, YY, and Shokin get tagged very early on. Savage spotting in some information, but there's not a whole lot he can do with that at the moment. Okay, coming in from Suicide. And you can see Savage, he's holding the alternative angle through mid, so if somebody comes out of lower tunnel, he's looking for them. That's the angle he's holding. But Orpers know that, and they will have to take pot shots through the doors at that angle as well. There we go. Spots it, but uh, it's a very tight angle, so if a player moves fast, almost never going to get that shot. Double peak coming in from short. There's some aggression for VG. The thing about this, though, is if you see the aggression on short, if you find that out, you, you know that long is open. So then you get some decisions that you, you want to make here. Going for B from that position is often not the best choice, just because they rotate so fast from catwalk. So often you want to try to take long and try to pressure, uh, pressure the CTs, try to get the pick off that way, or just try to beat them off of Catwalk. It's very hard to fall back from Catwalk for the CTs, so that's often a very good op option as well. But in this round we have now, with the very amazing advantage of the 5 versus 3 for Vici Gaming, also the way to close, it should likely be this flank coming in from from Lovey as he's by T-spawn right now. And Renegades are waiting a lot of time. There's 35 seconds left for them to go. And this setup across the a bomb site is kind of scary, to be honest, at this point. We've got a guy on Kara on Goose on Long. They've got the flank coming in very quickly from Lovey. So surely there's just no way for Renegades to do this. Quick flick to connect onto a Yam there. Savage not done just yet. And it will indeed be closed down. Vici Gaming with their first round on the board. And it is a round in which nobody falls, which is very much needed. Indeed it is. Can they string some momentum together though? Ricky on 16k will have little issue in buying. I think a number of people as it was on 16k as well. So... Renegade is going to have a lot of money for a lot of buyers. This one being the first, or rather the second. This was a nice shot. I respect the uh, second scope in as well. To aid in the headshot. So we've got JKS out in long early on. He's got two players to contest with. Oh, he's got four players there for support though. Down goes TB. Can his teammate get anything done here? Advent, he's not backing off just yet. He's still holding his, his uh, ground. And eventually, a very laboured kill there for Rike. And the entire Cyber, CyberZen team have rotated to A. We've got uh, Azza lurking towards B, but he's not in a position to get any information. He's really just holding down the rotation through CT to short. Yeah, Renegade should definitely be in a position where there's so much time, they can just wait. And either there's a push from a CT which they can capitalise upon, which is exactly what Azza's going to do, or the, the CTs will just be forced to hold in a very awkward way onto one of the two bomb sites. And you, you know the choice here is is pretty easy. If there's just three players left, B or A, just as long as you go together, is is completely fine. And another pick off there. Savage knew that he had to do something aggressive, and he can't get anything done. Just shocking left now, and I don't know if the shocking can actually really get much out of this, other than maybe a save. But even that will be difficult here. Because there's a lot of interest for Renegades to kill him. Because there is no loss bonus again for, for uh, Vici Gaming. This is pretty much worst case scenario for them. And it's very possible that Renegades are going to get around 12 rounds at the very least. I think that they're setting themselves up for this quite nicely. Because Vici Gaming will not be able to buy for a couple of rounds after this. There we go though. Shocking does get the kill but he's been discovered and he will be neutralized. Renegades 9-1, to one, and it's going to only get worse from here. Actually, though, 
I forgot actually, they did survive with five players in in uh, the round that they won, so they can actually f uh, scrap together some guns here, which is really nice. Mag7 on dust too. <coughs> <laughs> Say no more, James. <laughs> Say no more. Yeah, this is uh, a, a less than ideal, less than savoury situation. Not savoury as a breakfast in a hotel, I'm not sure. Or more sweet, rather. Pot shots being taken. Shoking's going to get tagged through the door. Again, the long play. He was very successful for Renegade so far. TB holding his ground, going down. And now we may lose another CT in isolation. Savage playing close with the AWP. This may be somewhat suicidal. He's got himself one shot, but he's got two to face. So, uh, yeah, that was a very unfavorable situation he put himself in. 1VX with an AWP. Often going to end in disaster. Bomb going to get planted over towards A, and now it's Love YY with 2 HP, trying to save what he can. Might be a rifle for him. He's got his Mag 7. Timeout being called, presumably by... It is indeed by VG. I like to save here as well. You do? This is the place I normally save. If my team had failed me, I'll be standing there. That's where you can find me. Come get me. Do you do this? Do you sit and smoke as well and oh. get killed, killed by a grenade? Is that what you do as no, well? No, I don't do that, no. Are you sure? No. All right. I'm impervious when I stand there. Once James told me when we were uh, taking a detour through the Bahamas, I'm impervious to the sun, Dan. I don't need any, any uh, lotion. And he got incredibly burnt. That was ex an extremely painful experience. <laughs> you found that you weren't quite as impervious as you first thought? No, no, that's that's correct. It was uh, a horrific time. <laughs> horrific experiment. Yeah. All right, so ten to one. This, this, honestly, this is pretty much the worst possible way a match of dust you can go for you. You, you lose uh, multiple buy rounds. You got that big loss bonus. You finally win a buy rounds, and then you get crushed, and you get reset. It's just not fun. And there's just so few options here for a team saving. On the CT side, it's not like Inferno, it's not like Train, it's not like Nuke. There's so many maps where you can get stuff done, but not on this map, really, to be honest. It's too open. It's too good for the rifles. And this is the good fast play coming in from Renegades. This is exactly what you want to see on Anti-Eco. Fast play into B or fast play into A long. They're very effective. It's very hard for the pistols to just do anything against them. Although some damage has been done, actually, to say the least. One player dead, two very critically low. And a medic is required, but there's no medics in Counter-Strike, unfortunately, for the Renegades team. However, they have a clear path to the A-bomb site, so they should be fine. And the only real danger now is just Savage with the AK that he's picked up. And there is interest as well for him to save this, because there's no real damage to the economy that he can really do that's meaningful. But what would be meaningful is if he had brought that AK into the next round. There's only two players with more than five frags on the VG side at the moment. They are not having a good time of things. <clears throat> Don't expect a strong performance from Renegades on this map. From Rike as well, who is top fragging jointly with Yustilo, who uh, is my one to watch, generally speaking, on Renegades. I know Az is getting a lot of attention and he's playing great as well. But Yustilo has been uh, pretty nasty. I mean, they just have a strong team all over, I would say. Yeah, and, and this is really great from a psychological perspective too, because when your entire team is doing well, there's so much pressure alleviated from you, especially, well, just from every single player. And it just, it just gives a lot of, a just much better environment for good performances. And this is, this is like a, this factor of pressure is a really interesting one from the very, very top level. And when you get really deep into tournaments and the pressure really does mount and things, things are not going your way. To see what players shine in those spots, in, in that you know, extreme pressure. And uh, as the saying goes, pressure makes diamonds. Sometimes you see something, you know, quite incredible and people's careers can really be launched from moments like that. But right now, Renegades have nothing to worry about. There's no doing, there's no wrongdoing for all them. As they just push in, looking for the frags, all they need is a coordination, a fast B split, simple as that. And it crushes the defense of VG Gaming once again. As there was a nice forward play, which could shut the round down. We've got players in CT spawn kind of stuck. Advent's definitely stuck. Azza doesn't have the HP to survive that duel. JKS will take down the second last player. Advent now on 7 HP. For Renegades, it's all about eliminating these people because they have too much money. 
Another AWP save opportunity for VG. We have a late exit from Yam just in case. Got to be a little bit careful when it's only a two versus one and nothing is going the way of VG in this game. You have to wonder how uh, Tyler would have matched up on this map at the very least yeah. in comparison. But uh, maybe we won't find out in this tournament the way Renegades are playing at the moment. 12 to 1. VG in another position where they can't go for a full buy. Two rounds left, and they are echoing to double their score from 1 to 2, basically. Orps, orps, orps. Three orps, the Oceanic Special. I think in the there surely there's an AK on the ground for, for Yam. I hope there is, because... There's, there, I don't know that there is, James, because he's... Uh, uh, this is. There's never, there's never a time <laughs> for, <laughs> for arrogance. Oh, there, there, we we go, go. there we go. Okay, it's all good. It's all good. good. The game is never won until it's over. It is that simple. Discipline must be shown, and it, it is, which is great. Yeah, you, you always want to just crush your opponent as much as you possibly can, especially in competitive matches. Of online matches, I know some teams get a little bit complacent, but. It is a skill to maintain your focus even when things are going really, really well. And here we go, just a bit of a wild spray then. Actually, a bit of extra damage done. But again, damage does not matter right now for VG Gaming. Only rounds matters. The damage is not really super meaningful. Although, Renegades did hurt their own economy by getting the third AWP in this round. But at the same time here, Lovey does have a realistic opportunity to clutch this. He does not have Kevlar. He does not have a kit. But if he just hits the shots here, then he can win the round if he's fast about it. Yeah, I'm smartly going for the bad plants. He can get wallbanging from that position, actually. We, I remember one crazy one we spawned in basic league once many moons ago now. Love YY. Is, where is he headed? I mean, they've e-code. They're at maximum loss bonus. So he might as well go for it because he's going to have the money to buy another one in the next round anyway. And the next round is last round. So... I mean, or at the same time that they they can use this as a as a sort of, sort of a timeout as well, I guess. I, I guess that that's that's the only value. Uh, it's a one v two, and I think they made a mistake there. I think you should go for it as well, but the, and yeah. that's the only thing any value I can see is is they can just use the time as a as a, as a sort of like a timeout basically. It's like some teams do on eco sometimes, where they yeah. stand in spawn talking. Yeah, but they can't they can't afford a timeout when the when the score is one to twelve. He's in one v two of a nort, and if he loses it, he can buy another one next round. I think they made a mistake there. I mean, he doesn't have a kit, which is an issue. I don't know if there was one on the way, but um, I feel like you have to go for that double up though for the VG side. Oh, yes. That familiar sound. The bass. Sounds, oh. like, sounds like somebody's boxing against a wall with an iron in their hand. Anyway, that's going to work out eventually. Love YY has been picked off. He had no grades in that uh, round. I think he maybe dropped the orbs to Savage so he could buy utility. So that's the one thing. If he saves the orb, he can have a bit more money for... Grenades. But yeah, the 1v2 when the score is 1 to 12 and you're max loss bonus and you've got 3k in the bank, I'm I'm going to try and do my best. The odds are small, but I mean, your odds yeah, in I'd general I'd are terrible when you when the score is 1 to 12 anyway. Yeah, I should definitely go for that one. The, the weird thing though is if we saw like a crazy push out of Yustilla there. He got, I mean, he, sure, he had he had supports um, from, from Pits, but at the same time, there's no follow-up if he dies, basically. He still has to make the frag. Uh, there, so that kind of gives their man advantage away, but at the same time, they're still able to push up long. And, and Vici Gaming are slowly but surely pushing in the back here. They they have a uh, uh, Joking who's kind of you know has pushed the upper dark area. They know now exactly what's going on. They see the players going across, and that smoke is awful. Big gap here for Savage to capitalize upon, and the frags are going the way of Vici Gaming here. Renegades perhaps a little bit sloppy towards the end of this round, but individual skill can save them. Now it's up to Joking on the rotation from B. Coming in from the back there, the element of surprise, not from good for back. it. JKS picks up the kill, and Renegades will indeed close the half 14 to one. Vici never got a look in. Solid stuff from the Oceanic side. And it is Rike up there with 14 kills. Yam with 11, you still have with 17, so actually he's the man 
He's third in the leaderboard, but uh, he's definitely up there. Rikis is getting the MVP stars. Nice shot there by Azza. That's a disgusting shot, to be honest. Yam did great in this position. Very patient tapping with the AK. And it's such a great update to the game that they improved the tapping for the... Uh, for, well, for the both. Well, just in the game in general. Yep. Yeah, tapping is much more viable now. And that is marvellous stuff. A, a, a Ward's patient play, especially in high-pressure situations. Pistol time. VG are on the push. Four men moving up short. Yeah, it's going to be absolute madness. Oh Azza. my god, what is that? It's mowing them down, three kills for him. As now there's real problems here for Vici Gaming. Two versus four for them. TB and Savage, absolutely doable. Savage switching out to the, or rather TB switching out to the USP. And Savage has got to be careful here, just going for the open faces against multiple players. Somehow gets a kill, somehow doesn't die. He's got no Kevlar, and TB goes in to try to help him out. Very strange stuff there, and it doesn't actually go too badly for them. Everybody's a bullet or two away from death. That is very... This could go either way between these two teams, but Vici Gaming, they needed to go their way. The smoke grenade used there for the suggestion of potentially a push through middle. Desperately trying to bait out another kill before they go in. And all the while, we got Savage moving through long onto the bomb site, on which there is one player. I believe it's JKS who's sitting up there on the bomb site itself. So waiting patiently, and soon he will find Savage with the Tech 9. Savage just jumped, so uh, JKS should realize that somebody is in long. Just requires one bullet. Everybody requires one bullet, but no one making a connection just yet. There is it. T takes on the flanker, needs to reload. Distance being closed now, but he will prevail. 15 to 1, 14 game points for Renegades in what could be a very fast first game. It's definitely looking that way. It would be probably the, one, the most one-sided uh, map we've actually even seen, I think, so far at the Asian Minor so far for the E-League Major in January. And, wow. Let's it's take it <laughs> back. <laughs> I'll oh take you, you and you. Thank you very much. That is insane. That is insane. Well... Got to move on. Fiji on the force buy, of course. Tech 9, CZ, Deagle, a smoke grenade. We mentioned uh, force buys and plans. And if pe if people, uh, you know, after losing a pistol, for example, or, you know, mid r mid game or whatever, have uh, strategies behind force buys, but what about when your, ha your hand is forced in rounds such as this? You have no choice but to have a strategy, otherwise you're going to be at a big disadvantage. Well, that's a good strategy. Getting two kills there, putting yourselves in a position to plant the bomb. Control of long as well. Renegades, will they send everybody towards short? Seems they might do. Okay, just having a look, waiting for his team to catch up with him. And now they will move together. No grenades for the uh, CT side as they come in for this retake. One of them on the ramp. Down goes Rike. JKS and Azza fighting back though. Still a player in the goose position, that's choking. But again, it's just a tech nine, one, one, one versus one now, and he can, he can hide behind a bad plant. 10 second defuse coming in, and Advent is still miles away, five seconds. And he's trying to bait, but he's, being, he's holding on, Azza. Oh man, nerves there of steel. Nerves of steel there from Azza. You can see him shaking his mouth at the inside. Oh my god. <laughs> Gonna make it though. 16 to 1, a crippling loss from Vici Gaming on the first map of this series that is a very bad way to start things off i think psychologically of course that's a big hit for vt gaming and it's also a big boon to to renegades they're going to feel amazing going into the second map yeah as a just shy of 20 kills there with one of the most disgusting mini performances in a pistol round one versus four kill three people what is that that's that's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous but there's not much uh, I don't know that we, we can say, apart from, you know, expected a strong performance from Renegades and Dust 2, we definitely got one. That's fine, James. There isn't much we can say, but we brought on some uh, intelligent gentlemen to uh, to give us their thoughts. Where? Where? Where, <laughs> where, uh, where, are these, back. where are these gentlemen, and are you sure they're intelligent? I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm promising things I can't deliver, nice. but but I've got, got three people. You Brits are too polite. Yeah. Way too polite. <laughs> I'm three guys. <laughs> I brought three guys. Yeah. Uh, go Detroit. <laughs> America. Y yet again. They now are North American team right now after map one the North American, at least for right now. <laughs> we all cool with that? Okay, good. Yeah.
All right, let's get into it. Uh, again, textbook uh, domination I, by I, Renegades, right? I feel like the opposite of, of what Vendetta was expecting it to be happened. As in, he said he, they would, you know, be full of self confidence. They would feel great after yeah. that yeah. win. Yeah, and they still know it's, what they it, were it feels doing. like it was the opposite. Like they, they that winning against Tyler at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's like they were that, like we did win, it. That yeah, that win against Tyler kind of they just blew out all the steam they had in themselves. Yeah, because yeah, that was just like straight up terrible. I don't even know what to analyze there, except for what the hell. No, yeah, yeah there's they're not. Been, <laughs> like you rarely, you rarely find a team being pummeled that hard as Vici were, and still not do anything to salvage or remedy the the situation you find yourself in. It was literally just like, okay, guys, this isn't working. Let's 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 try it again. It's like kudos to Renegades though, like changing the pace and like in those situations where like you know it's, they've. BG had the eco one, then buy, and then the spawns played in the favor of Renegades. They would go for long, they would win the battles, even though they were kind of awkward at points. We, yeah, we were just were talking about those. this yeah. in Green Room. Um, still, they would come out on top, and that's that's cruciating. When you've just ecoed, you buy again, you go for a long control, for the sure. T's rush in there, put good spawns, they win the battles, they get the man advantage. It's really, it just it eats you alive, right? So there were so many things just not going to favor of VG at all. But, but I, Again, I think that's Vici. Like again, it, that falls on Vici as well because you have so limited, like limited amount of spawns in CS go with the static spawn points. So at a certain point, you know that whenever we have this spawn, we're gonna end up in a scenario that Renegades are gonna have Ricky, you know, on the corner of of Long, sitting there with an op in uh, in cave, waiting for us to cross the corner. That's right? not even an issue, is it? Though hmm? that's not an issue. It shouldn't be an issue. It's only an issue if you make it an issue. No, yeah. but no, like, yeah. well, <laughs> Vici made everything an issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. But I'm just saying, it shouldn't be an issue, right? Even no, if no, they have the spawn, then there's a lot no. of ways to counter it, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, they, that's the thing. Like, the, again, it comes back to the fact that they didn't make a single yeah. friggin' ad, uh, adaption throughout the entire game. And then that's obviously, like, going into the next map, you have to think to yourself, like, well, uh, well, they're going into their map pick and or, you know, what have you. That should be beneficial for them, right? Even though they're not, this is Renegade's map pick where we're going we're into. We're going into, yeah. Um, but you so, you know you, you have to look at the like the fact that well at least they adapted in a loss so there's there's a hope but you didn't find anything that would actually like give you hope for Fiji going into the next game because they they didn't realize or it didn't seem like they actually figured out what kind of a situation they found themselves in to the point where they actually came up with an answer and and that's worrying like the, the that's pretty much all you can say about it it's just yeah it's one of the weakest dust food performances I've, I've seen from a team that you actually have like put to a certain standard. Well, let's take a look at the scoreboard and uh, see how it really fell down. Okay. Oh. Okay. Um, I mean, be, be we talk a lot about impact rating. Well, 16-1, I guess it's going to look like this. Isn't point. It? But <laughs> point. Well, we should point out that uh, <coughs> the guys who are uh, so strong who are uh, making this or, you know, are, uh, the ones developing this algorithm and everything – and uh, and sorting this impact rating out, they are you know on the fly changing. Yeah, things. they're actually like uh, adapting it. Yeah. Exa exactly, and they've tweaked around a couple of numbers. So obviously, the overall impact rating is going to look lower than than what we've seen earlier in the tournament. So let's say the the four point seven coming in from Ricky here could potentially be obviously the same as JKS seventeen point seven. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. just that the numbers yeah. are tweaked around. So it's going to be like the obviously the ratio between the the various players. You can see just by the fact that nobody on on V2 were able to to crack above one, uh, and uh, well, you have a uh, Ricky, pretty much like going f nearly five times that. That kind of tells you what kind of a difference there was between. Uh, uh, if you look at that, JKS sitting at what fifteen and six, but his impact rating is just one point three. Yeah, yep. means that his skills were not important. Yeah, they didn't really do much. And uh, Azza and Ricky obviously having the biggest impact for uh, for uh, Renegades. And we could definitely tell that early on with Ricky. He started off the game great, yeah. found an off.